Hi, this is Erika Kasab from Small Robot Studio. Today I want to talk about Cozy Blanket, the new iPad retopology app. You might have seen several artists getting very excited about this app because you can use models that you created in Nomad Sculpt. The videos make this app look super nice, but if you're a beginner artist, maybe you're wondering what is even happening here? It looks cool, but what is this? And is it worth investing in Cozy Blanket? Well, to answer this, we first need to understand what is topology and, of course, what is retopology. Any 3D surface is going to be made of points, which are connected by lines, which create faces. The exact same surface can have a completely different arrangement of these vertices, edges and faces. This is topology. When you hear someone say high topology, it means that the surface has a lot of faces, a lot of resolution. On the other hand, low topology means less faces, less points and less resolution. When we are working on Nomad Sculpt, we can know exactly the number of faces that our meshes have. All you have to do is go to the Display Settings menu and tap on the Stats icon. As soon as you create a primitive in Nomad, you can control its topology. I'm gonna create a cube and automatically we're gonna get this menu that will let me control the topology. And I'm gonna turn on the wireframe by tapping on this bottom. On this section, box topology, if I turn off constant density, I can decide the exact number of divisions that I want on each axis. If I go to the menu right on top, parameter, and I take this slider up, each of these squares is going to be subdivided. So I'm going to have the same arrangement, but with higher resolution. Once I tap on the green validate button, I can no longer edit this topology. Now, this very same menu is giving me other options. The first one, multi-resolution. This is a subdivision. So every time that I tap on subdivide, it's going to be giving me an extra level of resolution. I love to work with this because I can start with low resolution, which makes it easier to block in shapes. But as I start adding detail, I might get into higher and higher levels. And as long as I keep these levels, I can go back and forth between the low ones and the higher ones. I like to stay here as long as possible, but eventually I will get to a point in which Nomad will show me a warning. Too many polygons. Are you sure that you want to keep going? When this is the case or things just look bad and stretchy, it's time to move on to a different topology style. The next one in the menu. Voxel. This one is going to completely recalculate the topology. Forget about what you had before. Of course, the higher the number, the higher the resolution is going to be. We get a nice preview with a checkerboard, which shows us roughly the size of that the quads are going to have. Unfortunately, we are going to lose the levels that multi-resolution gave us. Voxel merge is also used to merge pieces together or cut holes from one shape to another. The next one in the menu is Dynotopo, which is short for Dynamic Topology. This is a method that I use on the later stages of a sculpt, usually when I need high resolution for details. The previous methods affect the whole mesh, but Dynamic Topology will let me add or reduce resolution to specific areas. You will also recognize it because it creates triangles in the faces instead of mostly quads, like we saw in the previous ones. When you have a mesh with high resolution, smoothing can be difficult, but with dynamic topology, it will reduce the number of polygons and make smoothing a lot more efficient. On the other side, maybe I need a lot of resolution for some really tiny details but I'm going to increase it only in the area that I need it instead of the whole model. This helps the program perform better, especially if your device doesn't have super high specs. More polygons mean more data, more data creates heavier files and require more RAM. 
There is one more option, which the Nomad 1.6 version offers, which is called Decimation. This looks kind of similar to dynamic topology, but this is meant to be used when you are finished, when you are not going to be sculpting anymore. Decimation is used to optimize your models, to reach the lowest amount of polygons possible while preserving the detail. It's going to keep a higher resolution only where it's strictly necessary, while it's going to simplify areas with no detail. Decimation is incredibly useful when you're going to take your models to other programs, because not all software is made to handle high poly counts like Nomad, even inside Nomad, if you want to create a UV map, so you can then take this model to Procreate for painting textures, it's going to take ages if you have a high poly account. So we reduce it with decimation to make this process faster, more efficient. Decimation is also a needed step when we are doing 3D printing and of course if we're going to take a model into cozy blanket, whose maximum vertex count can be limited depending on your iPad's available RAM. The point of decimation is to get rid of unnecessary information while keeping what is essential, to achieve the best performance of the software. These are the types of topology available in Nomad, but this is merely the tip of the iceberg. The point is, what is retopology? Every time that we change topology, we are doing retopology. The shape of the sculpt is the same, but the polygon arrangement is different. We've looked at the automatic methods that Nomad offers, but we can do this manually, which is what Cozy Blanket does. The main reason to do manual retopology is to make models usable for animation. We want to get the best poly count for the specific output and the correct arrangement for the formation. We will place rings of polygons and edges on the areas where movement originates. Not all the models will be animated, not all the models will deform. But when you take them to a different program, maybe for rendering, we need to make sure that we have the right amount of polygons. You can do this manually, but in many cases, automatic retopology can do a great job. If you scan real-life objects, for example with the Polycam app, you will definitely need to clean your model, because the default topology is gonna be a mess. Other reasons to do manual retopology include efficient UV unwrapping for more practical texture painting, or as a technique to create clothing on your characters, for which I'm gonna create a video in the future. However, be aware that you do not need it for clothing. It's an optional technique which I particularly enjoy. Now that we have all of this information, as a beginner artist, should you care about performing retopology? The answer is, it depends on the type of projects and goals that you have. Absolutely yes, if you want to rig and animate your models, especially characters. And even more so if your goal is to become a professional modeler. If this is the case, absolutely consider checking out Cozy Blanket and learning retopology. On the other side, if your models do not require deformation or animation, if you are only creating concept sculpts, doing 3D printing, you are taking your models to another software, but automatic retopology is enough. And of course, if you are only a hobbyist, you're not aiming to be a professional, then there's really not a good reason to care for retopology or cozy blanket. If you're curious, of course, play with it. There's a free trial that you can test, but do not pay for it unless your goals change. Manual retopology is a big investment of time and it has a steep learning curve. Most of the 3D artists I know hate this part of the process because there's not really a creative satisfaction out of it. It's not like sculpting where we are creating something out of nothing. Retopology feels more like a puzzle with math that needs a lot of planning, testing and redoing. You have to control the quads, the tries, the poles, you face challenges like connecting pieces with different resolutions, it needs hours of experimenting different techniques, and each media 
have different requirements. It's not the same going for video games, films, or more recently what Unreal Engine can manage. And now for the biggest question of this video. Is Cozy Blanket worth it? When you consider that topology is generally regarded as a boring process, well, Cozy Blanket is quite appealing because it makes it a game-like experience, unlike computer software which is kinda clunky and never as natural as just drawing with your Apple Pencil or even with your fingers. Maybe it will not make retopology enjoyable, some people just don't like it, but it will make it at least less painful. As for the pricing, we have two options. We have a $20 basic one, which is great for learning, and the full version recommended for professional use, which is $89.99. Like I said before, if you want to be a professional modeler, retopology is a needed skill. The thing is, full CG production is not possible in the iPad right now, in July 2022. We can do sculpting, we can do retopology, but there's no software that can do rigging or 3D animation. So to be a professional, we need a computer. So we might as well compare the options available in the computer. My good old favorite is 3D Code, which at the moment you can acquire for 379 euros for a permanent license, but there's other options which include subscriptions or deferred payments. I do not own the most recent version, but this has been my favorite because it offers the smartest and fastest tools for retopology and UV mapping. It can also do PVR textures and sculpting, but honestly it's not great for it. It's more likely that you're gonna find 3D code in a professional environment, but it's not necessarily a standard. As for the experience of using it, it's not gonna be game-like, like Cozy Blanket, but it's not painful, like I personally have found Maya Quadro to be. Up to July 2022, 3D Code has more sophisticated and advanced tools than Cozy Blanket. The price is kinda high, but you can get a free trial to learn and test it. Another great option is of course Blender, which is free. By itself, the tools are not super exciting or the most efficient experience. I actually made on the past a video on how to retopologize a face with the tools that come by default. However, you can get the GLP add-on Retopoflow, which you may purchase for $86. This add-on is going to give you magnificent tools that will change the experience and make the process more efficient. Similar to 3D Code, these tools are more sophisticated than what Cozy Blanket offers. Cozy Blanket is still going to be more fun. But you also got to consider that Cozy Blanket only does retopology, while Blender can do all the stages of production modeling, sculpting, giving mapping, render, animation, rigging, pretty much everything. But that can also make Blender very overwhelming and difficult to learn. Cozy Blanket is much more faster to learn, much more accessible. There are other software capable of doing manual retopology, but in my experience, these are the most competitive in terms of price, efficiency and experience. To wrap up, the main reason to do manual retopology is for optimization for animation, a necessary skill if you want to be a professional modeler. The basic $20 version of Cozy Blanket is brilliant for learning and can make the process fun. As for the full feature Cozy Blanket, which is $89.99, I would only recommend if you have the extra cash. Personally, I find Blender with Retopoflow more attractive. Maybe it's not as fun, but I value efficiency and the more sophisticated tools. There are exciting features in Cozy Blanket and lots of development going into it. So this might change in a not so distant future. As for 3D Code, I got a license before Retopoflow became so competitive. Again, I don't have the most recent version. Today is still my first choice but I'm unsure if I would get a license for a newer version. Anyway, this is my opinion based on my experience. I hope you find it useful. 
I'd love to hear what you think, especially if there's something that you consider I am missing. But for now, happy sculpting and retopology! That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.